Oh, Shawnee here on beautiful Kenai River. Had a successful week with my wife and seven other people have a great time flossing sockeye here on the beautiful Kenai. I've seen a lot of different techniques and I'm going to share with you what I think is the best way. Of course, a lot of people have their different opinions. I've seen guys come here with its only intent to, to snag fish anywhere and keep the fish. I've seen guys who really want to try to floss the fish which is getting it through the mouth and hooking it in the corner of the mouth or anywhere in the mouth. Um, I'm going to share with you how I set up my rig. Uh, there's a couple of points that I don't see a lot of people do that I think works really well. So I use a fly fishing pole. It just seems like it's better, but you can use the same techniques on a spin cast or bait cast reel. All right. Every river is different. And Kenai is obviously, as you can tell, it's a very fast flowing river, very deep. And so you have to modify your techniques and get a little bit more weight to make that work. Uh, so let me show you what we've worked on for Kenai. And you can, again, if it's a slower moving river and it's, uh, you could use less weight. The key is, is that it slightly bounce on the bottom. You want a couple of bounces on the bottom, but no more. Uh, if you get too much, you're going to snag on the rocks. Not enough, you're not going to touch the bottom. Those sockeye come right up on the edge of the river, uh, about five, six, seven, eight inches off the bottom, and that's where you want to present your lure. And the whole goal is different than the, there's five salmon species. The sockeye is the one that you want to try to floss. Um, yes, they will bite. That is a misnomer that they'll never bite. I've had them bite. But typically, this week, we've mostly, just, mostly been flossing these. Okay, so I come off my fly line, and I've tied a, about an ounce jig, I'm sorry, an ounce torpedo weight on it. And I've used a, a fisherman's clinch knot on both ends. And on the bottom side, I've adjusted, I've added, uh, taken off different weights as, as needed. Then I've got about, I, I, I use about six feet of line. Okay, now some people say that's extensive. When I got here, I was only using two and a half feet of line. Um, but let me tell you why I, I found out using six feet of line. Okay, then right in the middle, right in the middle of your six feet, about two or three feet up from your fly, you use a, just a, a, a little split shot right in the middle and that that seems to help present your fly a little better to the fish um, so then at the very end I I like to use a I'm a minimalist I see people use a big gobby stuff and that's fine no problem there's the famous big red number size four hook that I see people use and that's fine I love I, I find that I tend to snag the fish more on bigger hooks Here's an example of, of, a, of a hook that I use. Earlier in the week, earlier in the week, I was using a, a really small hook. Here's my fly. Let me look up and show you my fly and my hat. Oh, I lost it. That's why it's not there anymore. <laughs> anyway, it was about half the size, and I caught a big 10-pound sockeye on it. Somebody showed up and said, that, that uh, hook is too D-A-M small. No, yeah, I didn't even spell it right. But uh, I, I, I'm a minimalist. Minimalist. The smaller the hook, the more chance you're going to floss it. The bigger the hook, the more chance you're going to snag it in the back of the tail. Okay. Um, so that's how I set this up. Now I'm going to show you a couple of casts. The river's flowing from my left to my right, and uh, you want to cast up about. Up the river by about 45 degrees. Okay, there we go. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Right in there. And let it sink, sink, sink. Let it drag on a couple of times. Oh, I had a bite. Oh, big enough. If you're not hitting the bottom, most chancely you're gonna you're gonna go across the top of the back of the fish. Uh, many times, and that's happened to me. I'll, I I hook at the top. I said, okay, I gotta get more weight. If you snag it on the belly of the fish, you got too much weight. When I floss and go after sockeye, I start with very, it's very snug. 
very snug. It's different than when I fish for silvers. I don't make it as snug because I'm constantly stripping for silvers. When you're sock, when you're doing sock guy, you, 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 you keep it about the same distance out. So I make it, I tighten that down. You don't want to tighten it down so it's completely tight. Because if you, if you do, like right here, I tighten it down, I can't pull it out. Your fish is going to break off 90% of the time. So I back it off just a little bit, a little bit more. So it's just a little bit snug so that fish can just go, go out a little bit. There we go, about right there. It's nice and snug, but not completely tight. Wish you the best of luck. Have fun fishing Kenai River on the Sakai Run.